I've been getting a few comments and personal messages from people asking which version of Firefox they should get, either the stable version, which is Firefox 6, the beta version, which is Firefox 7, which will soon become the stable version at the end of September, the Aurora version, which is Firefox 8, and the nightly version, which is Firefox 9. So I thought I'd do a quick video that explains some of the pros and cons of you know getting Firefox 6, which is a stable version. So if we start with Firefox 6, the latest stable release of the browser, and it's probably the best choice for most people, in particular if you use a lot of the extensions, because if you've got like a brand new extension and you using for example Firefox 9, they probably won't work because the developers haven't actually you know fixed the compatibility issues for it. The best addition to Firefox 6 over you know previous versions if you want to upgrade from Firefox 4 or 5 is the permissions manager. I did on a Firefox 6 review, I actually did it on there if you want to go up basically on it. All I typed in the URL is the about colon permissions and you'll see a list of the sites in your browser history um, and you can choose any one of these and you're able to define its permissions so you can forbid the sites from opening pop-up windows or tracking your location and if you're a web developer uh, and you want to stick with the stable version because it's you know the most stable it's also got a thing called scratchpad where you can manually enter some javascript have it evaluated and then browse the results with the object inspector so that's Firefox 6 and if you want to then go on to Firefox 7 the beta which is I think on number 6 basically almost finished it's going to go into the stable channel in a few weeks it's the first version of Firefox 7 to benefit from what the Mozilla call memshrink which is as I explained in the Firefox 7 review where you cut where it cuts the memory consumption compared to previous versions because Firefox is known to you know suck up quite a lot of RAM although not as much as Chrome so you'll see you hopefully you'll see quite a lot of difference um, it also has, and again for developers really, it's supposed to have this thing called Azure 2D graphics which is supposed to make a significant uh, difference to the browser's performance eventually. However, I've been looking at it and it doesn't really have good results, it's like really variable so I probably wouldn't have that as a pro, it's just like, you know, perhaps something to think about in the future. So the next version which is Firefox 8, which I have done a slight preview on, um, it will finally introduce something called uh, to manage sorry, to manage the external addition uh, installation of add-ons so if a program tries to install a toolbar or a memory tracking or location tracking add-on without asking you first the browser will alert you to choose you you know to choose whether you want to uh, install it or not there's also a partial support for an HTML5 feature that allows pages to dynamically insert markup into a document which will provide web developers mostly with a great deal of flexibility However, there isn't really, apart from that, as I said in my review, there isn't really that much over Firefox 7 that, uh, that's an advantage to Firefox 8, so you'll probably wait um, until it at least hits the beta. And the last one is Firefox 9. It's obviously extremely unstable because it's basically not even in the alpha build yet. It's, you know, it's like the pre-alpha build. It's supposed to have a new user interface. It hasn't come out yet, but if you go on the, uh, I think if you type in Google Firefox UX, you can see like, some of the cool stuff that they're thinking of doing you know, for the new user interface. And this is also the first Firefox to natively support 64-bit on Windows, because I know Firefox on Linux and Mac has you know, supported 64-bit for ages, but you know, it does support it on Windows now natively. However, the point of 64-bit on browsers isn't really that important, because unless you're literally having hundreds, you know, tens and tens of tabs open at once, accessing tons of memory, there isn't really much point. And 64-bit browsers have traditionally run into problems with plugins, so websites may not always display correctly. So overall, I probably would recommend you stick with Firefox 6. Firefox 7 has got quite a few good features, but Firefox 6 is probably the best bet for now. 